this is my review of the Tesla Model 3 Performance Edition. This is the new Tesla Model 3 Performance Edition. That's right, it's the hottest and most powerful and fastest Tesla Model 3 you can buy. How do you tell a Performance Edition Model 3 from a regular Edition Model 3? The big telltale sign are these bigger wheels and tires. Instead of the regular 18s, the Model 3 Performance Edition comes with 20 inch performance wheels, much, much bigger brakes. Yeah, they're much, much bigger and red performance brake calipers. Now this used to be a $5,000 option, but uh, just last month it's included. It's now free. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's now free. This particular car is wearing a nice uh, resmi red color because it's a performance car. So why not? Huh? It's also a $2,500 option for that. Uh, it's a good looking car. I mean, looks wise, it looks nice. It's like a sporty, shrunk down, miniature Model S. So uh, let's talk about how to get into the car. These door handles, they, they remind me of the, uh, the Austin Martin door handle. You push it in, you pull it out, and that's how you get into the car. Now, you want to lock it up. It doesn't use, you notice there's no keyhole, no nothing. That's because the Tesla uses a, uh, a key card. So you want to lock it, you just put it against the thing, and it locks right up. You want to unlock it, you, and it unlocks it. Or, alternatively, you can link it to your smartphone. Since it's a loner, I can't do that yet, but if you link, once you link it to your smartphone, uh, you don't have to do anything. Oh, I might unlock once you lock to the car. So let's take a look at the interior. Turn off the music here. As you can see here, the interior is pretty minimous. There's absolutely no instrument in front of you. Everything is controlled by this 15 inch touchscreen. Yeah, it's like a giant iPad just stuck here. It's, on, it's very solid, mounted very cuddled very nicely. And you look at the center console here. So we have this one. This is for, actually, it's a smartphone holder. So you put your Smartphone right there, and boom, that holds it. It even has, let's see right here, let me zoom in on that. That's for the iPhone, but you can plug in whatever you want. Uh, in my case, I don't have a, I don't have a USB-C connector, but let me show you like that. And you can see this is your, so that plugs into, now you can see that right there, two USB ports. So you plug in a USB port, and you can route it on in here and it comes on here then you just plug in your phone to it and it will charge your phone and while it's it can also you know it's in a good location to display your information if you need that so you can actually charge two phones an iphone or android whatever nice cup holder the armrest you lift that up and there's a deeper armrest so nice bit of storage space now to stop the car once you get in the car you take your your key again and you just put it here and that will allow you to put it here and that will allow you to start the car and drive it so let's look at the instrument panel here it's divided into two groups this is the main group where it tells you your what gear you're in how fast you're going it gives you information like you know how much power you use and stuff like that and yeah information and over here is the navigation music so when I'm playing, you can always scroll up. I noticed that the uh, display is uses a, I think they found to an Intel chipset. They used to use NVIDIA chipset. So it's much, much faster. Yeah, it, everything loads up much, much faster. It's a uh, responsive. You, know, you can turn to regular map view. You can see all the charging stations nearby and you know how far to zoom in. Stuff like, yeah, it's, it's very, very quick, very, very responsive. So let's look at the controls here. So. Red control, parking. I want to show you guys here the an autopilot. There has a new navigate and autopilot feature. It allows you to, if you enter the GPS, it will actually guide you from on ramp, driving, choosing the right lane to off ramp. It will all do it automatically, so customizing summons because you want to control the car. Summon, you could back out of the garage. 
tells you how close you want to get so you make all everything all control navigation navigation avoid trip planner online routing avoid ferries avoid tolls you want to adjust the mirrors you use these buttons you use this button here and if by turning it it adjusts the mirrors <laughs> and same thing you then you switch to the right and same thing using the button and so these buttons are mounted to the steering wheel so again you want to adjust the steering wheel you want to make steering wheel go in and out okay. and so depending on what you have it set to these buttons do multiple things. They could adjust the wheels, adjust the mirrors, used to adjust the volume, used to adjust the the, nav the cruise control speed. So that, yeah, the doors, very, very simple. You know, you got your power window switches and you got the button to open the door. You also have a secondary latch to open it. This is in case your electronic button doesn't, in case your battery goes die. So you got this, uh, the manual one overrides, you pull up here, but don't recommend you do that because you do that, it doesn't pop on the way low the window. So they, they just warning for that. So you just push the button, door opens up. Let's look at the back seat. The back seat. Uh, there's an, as you can see, a little scuffed up here. It's uh, there's not really that much leg room. It is a, it is a, it is a smaller car, but and for backseat passengers, you got additional USB ports right here. So, you know, they can stay entertained by charging their equipment. It's three passengers. This is kind of cool. That's the headrest for the middle passenger. It goes up and down. And when it's not, it also has a folding down armrest for, for drinks and stuff. Yeah. So, there you go. And your backseat passenger gets a nice window. So, as you see, big window here. Big window here. Let's see, now let's look at the trunk here. Now, unlike the Model S, this is not a hatchback. It is it's a full sedan. It's the, yeah, the Model S is a hatchback. So therefore you can't, yeah, just a full blown trunk in here. There's a quite a bit of space. So you can see down here, that's the chest of charging cable. So there's a bit of space here, a little cubby hole here. And some people ask about this. Look, this is interesting because uh, it's a little mesh that allows you to see through to the car. Now, some people has wonder what this is. And I believe Doug DeMiro says that it's, it's to let air go into the interior when you close, when you close the trunk because, you know, it makes a big flood and the air pressure might blow it up. So that's to let air escape into the interior. Uh, truth of the matter is, no, that's not what that's for. That's ridiculous. The reason that is there is for the subwoofer. You see, uh, there's, a, there's an 8 inch subwoofer in here as part of the premium sound system and the bass comes out goes through this mesh portal and into the interior of the car and that's how you get the great bass so that is what that is for it is not to uh, release pressure <laughs> yeah all right let's uh take this thing in the roll and see how it drives so where to begin First of all, let's let's launch this thing to 60 miles an hour. See how fast it is. All right, step on the gas. Woo! <laughs> yeah, it's pretty quick. Uh, it it doesn't have the slam you in the back of the seat off the line that the Model X or the Model S performance does. Uh, one it doesn't have launch control in fact it it seems to uh, the off the line punch is nowhere near as powerful it kind of starts off leisurely and then and then picks right up whereas the uh, the Model S and the Model X are ludicrous with, with the launch control you hit the brake hit the gas at the same time you can feel the torque strain against the motor and then once you let go of the brake it just slams you smack in the back of the head like you've been like someone just punched you this is more like, it's almost like grannies getting off the line. It starts off like kind of, the sensation's not there, but then once it gets momentum, like once after it hits like five miles an hour, it starts moving and you can feel it, you can feel a nice shove in the back of, in the back of the seat. So, uh, yeah, I, I watched a little more drama off the line, but once it gets going, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's very quick. It's very powerful. The, uh, the car is definitely smaller than my Model X. 
and uh, room wise uh, like yeah it's I mean I got more than enough headroom more than enough headroom and I'm, I'm six foot two so more than enough headroom for me as you can see it the suspension is not doesn't use it does not use the air suspension like the uh, like the more expensive Tesla it uses a just regular uh, coil suspension system but uh, it handles quite well it's uh, very very smooth uh, not as smooth as the as a Model S or Model X because it doesn't have the air suspension but overall not too bad and this big thing here let me blow by it there you go and uh, the pickup as you just saw right there I just um, <laughs> this truck was on the merge thing I just blew right by them like they were just standing still yeah the, very, the throttle is very very responsive like I just so much as tap the gas pedal and it it moves forward the steering is nice and tight it has three settings like a normal standard uh, a light standard and sports mode this is on sports mode it's a little tighter it gets a little sporty feel the steering wheel at first was uh, I felt very very small I go it's awfully small the steering wheel but uh, I guess uh, it's a sporty steering wheel you get used to it and it, it matches the car the instrument panel um, is off to the side there's nothing in front of you at first it was disconcerting but I've gotten used to it uh, and it offers a fantastic view out the front because there's nothing in my way and I also like it because there's no instrument panel you know in my way here those these air vents that long slot air vent the air goes right through the inch right through the steering wheel and hits me in the face so that's a uh, that, that's really cool I, I, I really like that that's a uh, golf is a nice cool feeling yeah but uh, uh the the glass roof is just the glass roof there's no sunroof and as you can see I'm right now I'm driving at 66 miles an hour and it is very very quiet and serene in here and quite comfortable yeah. changing the lane the autopilot the autopilot 2 uh, let me see, oh, just engage it by here just double tapping and it's engaged autopilot 2 is on it now drives itself I noticed the uh, the inf it shows a lot more information of all the cars around you and now we can also do navigate by autopilot so if I enter a, a location onto the uh, onto the onto the GPS it will autopilot will navigate me there it's go telling, telling me which lane to go to take me all the way to the on off ramp as well and before taking over so uh, that that's definitely the most advanced autopilot you can get right now uh, but yeah I mean I really don't have much to complain about I mean the seats are the seats are quite comfortable I wish the the headrest was adjustable. These headrests are not. They don't they don't go. Yeah, it, it doesn't go up, so it's a it's a one side fit all. I, I would like. I mean, it's not bad. I would like it maybe up a little bit more so I can. Yeah, but it's it's okay. The sound system uh, sounds much better than my Model X. It's uh, it sounds it sounds really really good. Uh, that the bass is strong, the mids are clear, and the highs are are, are really nice. Are really nice. Quality wise, uh, the material looks, yeah, you know, typical Tesla. Like a, it, you, with a Tesla, you're paying for the technology of the car and the performance of the car. You're not so much paying for the the material and interior finishes and that stuff. Uh, but it is an improvement uh, from Teslas from a years from a few years ago. The fit and finish seems to be a lot better. The material overall seems to be better. This is not leather. This is a, it's well, it's vegan leather vegan in other words it's a, some kind of synthetic uh pepper fake leather whatever you want to call it but it you you would not be able to tell you would not be able to tell that this is not real leather it actually uh lasts longer it is more stain resistant that's why they offer the car in white because normally uh, my model x has a white interior and in the last few years it has held up extremely well not a tear the any stain just wipes right off so uh really 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 great and over it has a uh, because of the amount of glass front side above and behind the overall feel is a uh, one of an eerie open cabin that uh so makes the car's interior feels bigger than it actually is so this is a really big car so but it, it feels nice and roomy in here and uh, i don't feel cramped i mean i would like to see the huge panoramic windshield that my model x uses because uh that's the first thing I got noticed I got in. I, the Model X doesn't have this piece, it's just one piece of glass, so you get this incredible 
forward view, but I got this thing, and I do. I noticed that first, but you you will get used to it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. overall, I I like it. I like it a lot. It's a great little car. Uh, the Model Three Performance starts at sixty of oh, yeah sixty something thousand dollars, so it's not cheap. It competes against the. Uh, the BMW M4 or M3 and the Mercedes C-Class AMG edition. But uh, it outperforms those cars. It's faster than those cars it, and it rides great. It, it's nice and comfortable. Now the, diff, now, the choice. Should you get a Model 3 Performance or should you get the non-performance? The, it's the 10000 I think it's a 10, I think it's $10,000, maybe more. 10000 difference in price, maybe more, maybe ten or $14,000 more in price. Is it worth it? Well, that, that really depends. The, the performance will go 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds. And which is, well, I think the uh, the, the regular dual motor will does it, does it around 4.6. So it's almost over a second faster and you will notice a difference. So if, that, if that's worth, if that's worth 10 to 14 grand for you, then then go ahead. And one of the reasons, actually, one of the good reasons you, you may want to go for it now is because the Model 3 Performance now comes standard with the Performance uh, Package. It used to be a $5,000 option. Uh, now you get wheels and big brakes and a spoiler for an extra five grand. Now it's free. So, yeah, so th that's a good reason to get it. But so far, uh, I do like it. I, I do like it a lot. And uh, I'm gonna, um, yeah. So, anyway, I, I, I'm on my way to return this car right now. And uh, I'll decide if I, I want to keep it. All right. So uh, subscribe to my channel to find out if I do or not, or if I get something, if I get a different Tesla or get something else entirely. All right. Anyway, it's John Shop at Thank you very much for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like that. Subscribe to my channel. See you guys on the next episode.